Good thing I'm not gonna talk about anything strange tonight. Oy. Where's Sherry? Where's Sherry? Sherry, 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 Sherry. Right there. Yes, come. Give Sherry, my new friend, a hand. You've been a partner for a long time, huh? Yes. How long? Well, let's see, I think it was in the early 2000s I caught up with you. Wow. Yeah. Talk about faithfulness, eh? You're one, of, you're one of the first people God put in my life. That's awesome. Like number two. Number two. Yay. Great. Okay, in a good way. <laughs> Graham Cook, right behind Graham Cook. <laughs> oh, I'll take that. Next time I see him, I'll say, I'm right behind you, bro. Gave me, gave me a man and a woman. <laughs> hey, come on, bring it. Okay, so you have a really good, you're going to say a testimony on behalf of another person. Okay, so this is really, like, crazy awesome. Okay, so tell us the story. I have a friend when she was 18 years old that got pregnant. It was her first pregnancy. And she lived in a very remote area. And the doctor there, when she went to him, when she went into labor, just, it was a horrific story of neglect, malpractice. The baby, he kept neglecting her and leaving her for long periods of time. And in that period of time, the baby died inside of her. And when they realized that the baby had died, he literally just butchered her open and cut the baby in pieces and took her took the baby out of her and in the process cut her up this way and that way and inside she had a close to 99 stitches 99 stitches so she was basically mutilated in her personal areas well the scarring that took place it was keloid like I don't know if you understand what that was but the swelling was so huge inside of her and never outside of her too never went away it was excruciatingly painful it destroyed her relation her ability to have anyway and she had been in pain all of her life she, she you said something about she couldn't even sit down without excruciating pain so um when I got a hold of Katie's teaching on healing, where she's got a two CD set. It's called Speak Life. Yes. And I immediately took it over to her. And when I did, God spoke to her and he said, you play that day and night. And she did. And about a month later, she got completely healed. <laughs> Yeah, I think I heard something like she played it every night, every night and then every morning and she would write down the scriptures and she would decree it after me. I would say it on the soaker and then she would say it. Yeah, so she repeated it at, you know, she played it all night long, but she, she would play it, you know, while she was awake and write the stuff down. She repeat after right. everything that you said, right. but I, I, I just, I knew. <laughs> And she told me that the keloid scars, which they were almost like um, male. Go ahead. Yes, yes. They're, it was just huge. Just they looked like male genitalia because they were that big, correct? Yes. And they got smaller and smaller and smaller, and now they are gone. Gone. <laughs> Yeah, let's do her. Whoa, God, man. Can we give God a bigger praise? Oh, God. That's massive. Massive. Okay, and then uh, I prayed for her, too, and she has chronic migraines and uh, an ear problem from an aneurysm bursting in her brain. She has an ear problem. She can't fly and stuff. So uh, during the prayer, we removed his snake from her head and the headache which she said was 
over a 10 in pain, completely left. Yes. Yes. She's okay, now you had a testimony about the serpent and the soul teaching. Okay. So powerful. I was, I had it playing, this was a long time ago. I can't even, I don't even know when you put it out. It's been a while. Um, but I'm driving down the road. I'm playing this thing and she's talking about the asp being under the tongue. The poison of asp is under the lips whose mouth is full of bitterness and cursing. Romans 3. Complaining, things of that nature. And as I'm driving, it's like somebody grabbed a hold of my mouth and pulled it open. And I couldn't shut it. <laughs> People must have been wondering if you were screaming in your car or something. <laughs> and the instruction was to grab the snake <laughs> and pull it out. So I took my hands off the wheel and I just... <laughs> Come on. And out it came. And I was able to shut my mouth. <laughs> and I threw it into the pit and told it to burn. And then and then later that evening, when I finished playing it's three CDs, I play I turned it on again and I played it while I slept. And I got delivered of a demonic king. And he was so angry. I saw it in a vision in an open field, you know, with mountains in the background. It's like he's walking across this field. And he has on the kingly robes, you know, and he's got the white hair and the beard, the white beard and the crown. And he's, he's walking away. I mean, he's looking over his shoulder just. And he's walking away. And he's looking back at me. Ha, ha, ha. Bye. Bye. Bye, Nora. <laughs> and then right behind it, you know, I'm, I'm like in the water and, and these doors open up and here comes this huge python snake that comes riding through the waters right after he left. And I was able to just slap it and tell it to go. And it, and it was gone. Come on. I was in my sleep. <laughs> Can we give God a bigger hand than that? Thank you. I love you. Praise God. So guess what we're going to talk about tonight? Snakes and witches. And it's not gooby. It's reality. And you probably didn't understand how it works. And uh, now you're going to be free. <clears throat> because the serpent is the most craftiest beast in the field. Meaning you're walking around carrying snakes and you don't even know it. Because snakes have camouflage technology. They are able to hide in plain sight. Some snakes have scales that look like the sand and so you can't see them unless you walk up on them and they shake their tail and they're a rattler and they're about to bite you. Or they have scales that are multicolored so they're in a pile of leaves and you can't see that they're there. Snakes have camouflage technology. People are walking around carrying snakes, demonic serpents, and they don't know it. Now, I'll give you two men here. Dale and Vern, can you come up? <clears throat> give them a hand as they come up. So I knew I was supposed to preach this message. I haven't preached this message for years, and I've never preached it here because the first person I walked into when I walked in here was Vern, and he had a snake wrapped around his arm. And I said, what's going on? And you said, come over here. You said you had? Gout. For how long? 23 years. What level of pain did it make you suffer from? Because gout is painful. It's uric acid, excessive uric acid build up in the joints in the body. What level of pain did you deal with every day? 10. 10 level pain. It was this arm right here? Yep. I knew something was wrong because I saw you going like this and I looked really good. And I was like, oh, it's a snake on his arm. <laughs> right? Okay, so... Um, you couldn't move your fingers at all. Correct? Exactly. Because of the pain? Right. So you were actually walking around baby in it like this? Exactly. Okay. How long had that level been going on? The last eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks. It got to that level after 23 years. Where your hand was paralyzed and frozen, couldn't move your fingers. That level of pain. 
Can you show them your fingers now? Yeah, and you couldn't move your wrist at all either because you had the rheumatoid, correct? Exactly. Uh, how long do you have that? 23 years. Same thing. Okay. And see this little lump right there? It was way, way bigger. What Wasn't it? Or am I exaggerating? Oh, it was way bigger than that. It was like a golf ball. It was like a golf ball, right? And you had a, another smaller one here, which it's not even hardly there anymore. Okay, but this one, so see, the venom gets trapped in the body. And so after I prayed the first time, then I came back and checked on you, and it was like, what, 50%? Yes. 50%. And, I, and so I was like, okay, um, I said, now that's the venom. Let's get rid of it. So I prayed again, and we commanded the venom to be expelled from your body, and we took communion, right? Yes. And that started shrinking. Definitely. Yeah. No, so you had a level 10 pain. You couldn't move your hands. What's your pain level now? None. <laughs> <laughs> we got rid of that snake walking around we don't even know if we have snakes Dale come over here come over here okay everybody this is Dale give him a big hand <laughs> Dale had a snake on his foot so tell me what happened so right before I went to Africa I had a callus on my foot my wife and I we had shaved it down and it got infected and so it's been hurting me really ever since and then when I come back here to go out soul and then on the first day, it started getting worse. And it was hurting very badly. And the pain was about probably a 10. It's, uh, and it stopped me from going out every Saturday really to be an effective soul winner because I couldn't walk that much. Okay, now during the prayer, we judged the serpent and removed it. And then I also said, you also have some sort of like numbness in your foot and you have like a frozen toe or something. Was that correct? That's, that is correct. I had neuropathy. And then a little bit of gout on my right foot. Neuropathy and gout. Okay, so that's when uh, I also knew it was a snake, right? So then we prayed, we removed it, we judged it, we took communion. And now, uh, how's the pain level? Well, it was a 10. It was very bad, especially when I walked around. Uh, then it was about a 3 last night. Right. And then today hasn't bothered me at all. Not at all. Okay. Now, how's the numbness from the neuropathy? None. What's... Zero, zero numbness. How's that frozen toe? Uh, the frozen toe, I can move it. You can move it now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Can we give God a praise? <laughs> this is real. Whether you want to admit it or not, let's talk about it, okay? Okay, so. <clears throat> Shut up. All right, we're going to open up. This is, this is Luke 11, verse 19. And this is Jesus talking. I think it's just in the New King James. It says, Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample on serpents and scorpions. Oh, I guess this is the Amplified. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power of the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any wise harm you. So here's Jesus. He's talking about that we've been given authority over serpents and scorpions so that they cannot harm us. So obviously this means, number one, that serpents can what? Harm us. Okay? But Jesus has given us authority over them. Now, is he just talking about snakes in the natural? Because some people will fight that with me. You would not believe the... The names I get called online for these kinds of teachings. But yet, here is the fruit. So you know what? You can talk smack about me all day. I don't care. I know you all don't. But people out there, they can, I don't care. Because all I want to see is that. That's all I care about. That's all I care about. When I walked in that door, I, I honed right in on, on Vern. Like a snake hunter. Boom. Okay, I didn't waste no time. So they can talk. I don't care. Is Jesus just talking about snakes in the natural? Because that's what some people will say. Well, I think that's part of it. Because, you know, look at Paul. He had, he had dominion over a snake in the natural. Shipwreck. Remember, he goes to the island of Malta, carrying around a bundle of sticks. And he gets bit 
It, the, the, there was a snake hiding in the bundle. See, a snake hiding in the bundle. He's walking around carrying a snake and he doesn't know it. Hello? Did you guys think that you were walking around carrying a snake? See, the word bundle there means mankind, all of mankind. All of mankind is walking around carrying snakes and they don't know it. But when he threw it to the fire, the heat of the fire drove that snake out of its hiding place and it bit him and he was left unharmed. There's a couple things to learn from this lesson. Number one, snakes hate fire. <laughs> the Holy Spirit fire. When the dancing and the singing tonight, why do you think that broke out? Because God knew the message that was going to be out tonight. So he's having everybody just like, whoa, come on, get it. Get it with fire. Because that drives snakes out of their hiding place. Snakes hate fire. Number two, that shows that, that Paul had dominion over that serpent in the natural, which some people argue, right? But also in the supernatural, because after he got bit, shook it off, he was left to totally unharmed, he went on to do what? Have a revival, hit the island. He goes and starts praying for every single person on that island, and they all get healed, okay? That's because when you shake off the serpent that you're carrying around now, revival's going to break out. Because you can't heal somebody of, of something that you have. He got the rest of the snake infested people of that island healed. You can't get the rest. You can't desnakeify people if you're carrying around a bunch of serpents. You got to get shake them off first yourself. Expose them in the fire of God and shake them off. And then you can start pulling off other people. Then when you walk into a room and you see somebody with a snake wrapped around their arm, you're going to be able to take it right off of them. They're going to get healed. It's that easy. Okay? But see, when Jesus said that in Luke 11, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall anywise harm you. He wasn't just talking about snakes in the natural. He's talking about demonic serpents, demons that manifest in the form of snakes. How do we know that? Because the verse right before that, Jesus had just sent out the 70 and, uh, you know, to go and to town to town and heal people. And when they came back, they said, wow, even the demons submitted to us in your name. And that's when he said, behold, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any wise harm you. So in context, he's talking about demons. Why should we be surprised? The very first demonic manifestation in the whole planet is what? Satan as a serpent in the garden. Most common devil on the planet is serpents, demonic serpents that harm you. Even at the end of the book, what's Satan called? That old serpent. Do we see it? This is, you know, when I first, I, I went to a church in Texas and preached this. Oh my God, you should have seen the people were like horrified the whole time. And I just like kept on shoving word down them. Word, 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 word. And finally it broke and they're all like pulling snakes off their bodies and dancing around. It's like, wow, the truth breaks out, man. People get wrecked and healed. How many of you know that Jesus told us in the Great Commission that we're supposed to take up serpents? Remember the Great Commission in Mark 16? I think it's uh, verses 15 through 18. It says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And all these signs will follow those who believe. Believe in what? Believe in Jesus, but also who believe that these signs will follow them. What are the signs? Ready? The signs are, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And they will drink anything deadly. It will by in no means harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Look, I've heard people preach on the, this is called the Great Commission. And it's to every single believer, not just Katie Souza. Meaning we're all supposed to lay hands, cast out demons, baptize the nations, and what? Take up serpents. I hear people preach that message and they slide over that really fast. Baptize the nations, lay hands, cast out demons, pick up serpents, and preach the gospel. It's like back up, do the take up serpents part. Let's camp on that for a minute. 
Jesus told us to take up serpents. We're not doing it. You know, take up means it's the Greek word iro. It means this, to remove anything that's attached to anything. Meaning these serpents will attach themselves to what? Anything. Your body, your money, your mind, your emotions, your life, your household, your vehicles, your children, your marriage. Because they're out to harm you. And they don't attach to anything. Anything. And remember, the serpent's most crafty, craftiest beast in the field. They have camouflage technology. They're attached to a bunch of things in your life right now and you don't know it. You're walking around carrying a bunch of serpents like, like Paul was. He was obliv. He had no idea that he had a serpent hiding in the bundle of sticks that he picked up. That's what we're doing. That's what those guys were doing. That's what the lady was doing. You would not believe the testimonies I, I, I've seen about this. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. People getting healed of crazy stuff. Cancer tumors coming out of people's breasts. When a serpent comes off their breasts. It's true. It's true. <laughs> How do we get rid of them? <clears throat> There's two legal grounds in our life. The soul is the first legal ground. There's things that we have in our soul that's in common with demonic spirits, including these serpents. That's why Jesus said in John 14, 10, 14, 36, he said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. You have stuff in you. That's in common with demonic serpents. It's not in your spirit. It's in your soul. It's in your thinking. It's in your emotions. It's in your decisions. That's the in common area that the enemy uses to, uh, to lay claim on us, to have a legal right to attack us. That's why we have to always examine the soul. When I pray for those guys, I pray for their souls to be healed of anything they had in common with the snake. That was the first prayer I prayed. Now, what could we possibly have in our soul that's in common with a demonic serpent? Well, let's look at some stuff. And we're also going to connect this all to witchcraft. Because <clears throat> y'all don't understand something. Witches, witches curse, serpents carry out the curse. They're the muscle. They enforce the curse. And I know all about that because I used to be the muscle. People would send an order out to me and tell me, go, go collect this and that from this people. They owe me money and I'd go get it. I was the enforcer. I completely understand that dynamic. That's what I did for a living. I liked it. Okay, They like it too. Witches curse, serpents enforce the curse. They work hand in hand together. So what can we have in common in our soul with these serpents that are giving them the right to attack us? Because the devil always needs a legal right, amen? Okay, number one is sin, right? What does it say in Ecclesiastes 10, 8? He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever shall breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Sin breaketh the hedge. Listen to me. I, I don't say this to scare you. I say this to warn you and exhort you. The devil's looking for any type of thing that you do that breaketh the hedge. Do you understand? Anger, gossip, rage, talking about peeps, uh, complaining, grumbling, all that stuff breaketh the hedge. You can't do that no more. Warfare has gone to a new level. Can you feel it? It has, for sure. For me, I'm the warfare queen. I'm, I'm Zena, warrior princess, all right, on crack. Zena got nothing on me in the spirit, okay? So look. You got to be aware. You got to be smart. You, you know, I, your soul likes to complain. It likes to get angry. It likes to get upset. Well, guess what? Every time you do that, you break at the hedge and a serpent comes in and bites you. You're inviting your own warfare. Just saying. Look at this scripture. Watch. <clears throat> Romans 3, 13 through 14. 
New King James Version. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of bitterness and cursing. I'm, I'm just spanking you a little bit, so go ahead and bend over. Just a couple little pats on your butt. Seriously, I have to spank myself. Bitterness and cursing. Break at the hedge. And the serpent comes in and bites you. Look at his arm. It was puffed up. I'm not saying that this is what Vern's problem was. It's just one of the many things. But Vern had, and so did Dell had venom trapped in their, in their bodies, in their legs, in their arms. That's the poison. of. That's the, the, that's the venom. I, I'm not sure how it got it for them. It could have even been generational. But I'm giving you some examples. If your mouth has been full of bitterness and cursing, if you're complaining about stuff, about people, about saying things, you are breaking a hole in a hedge, and you are inviting a snake to come and invite you. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? You got to catch yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. <clears throat> You got, you got, you, you got a pinpoint. You got, you, when, when, when you, you either got to withhold your soul, resist, or if you explode and you lose it and you do something, you better be quick to repent. Did you hear what I said? This is super important, man, because you are just, excuse me, I almost said screwing yourself. I'll just say it, screwing yourself. Sorry, take the girl off the street, can't take all the street out the girl. Okay. You are. You don't understand. The soul likes to complain. The soul loves to complain. Oh my God, and then they did this. And oh my God, and then they did that. Oh, and if you're not complaining with your mouth, you're complaining with your thumbs as you're texting everybody what that person did to you. And then look at the text they sent here. I'll copy and paste it. Do you believe it? The nerve. Our sin is spread from here to here. These are united. Am I right? Come on. Come on. Come on. And you're breaking a hole in the hedge. You're letting, letting a snake come in. You saw what the snake did to Vernon and Dell. You want that? No, of course you don't. So when you do something with your mouth, you got to be quick to repent. Why repentance? Because, of course, the Bible talks about, you know, when we confess our sins freely, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and dismiss our lawlessness. But here's the deal behind that. Listen, do you remember what the very first prophecy about Jesus was? Jesus is always the answer when it comes to serpents. Do you remember what the very first prophecy about Jesus was? It was in Genesis. After the serpent caused all of mankind to fall, Right? We're all in this state now because of a demonic snake. Right? And what was the judgment God said to the serpent in the garden? He said, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. Where did that crushing take place? On the cross. That's where the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ, hung on a cross for our sins, and he, the first job that he had on that cross was to fill that first, very first prophecy about him in the Bible, and that was to what? Crush the head of the seed of the serpent. So when you blow it, or you know you've been gossiping, or complaining, or, or getting angry, or grumbling, or judging, or being critical, or bitter, or offended, or whatever it is, you run to the cross. Cha. You run to the cross, and you cling to that piece of wood, and you let that blood drip down on you, and you say, Lord God, cleanse my mouth. In fact, say it with me now. Ready? Say, Lord God, I cling to the cross of Christ. I've used my mouth to speak bitterness, anger, offense, judgment, criticism, and I repent. Lord Jesus, cleanse me with your blood. When I confess my sins, you're faithful to forgive, to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, the cross and your blood 
is the place where the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. As I cling to your cross, as I receive your blood, through my repentance, you're crushing. Cr come on, crushing. Come on, crushing. Crushing that head of that serpent that's on my life right now. Lord Jesus, I repent and I receive the power of the cross to crush the enemy right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Now lean over to your neighbor and start going fire on your soul. Fire. Come on. Come on, release fire. Drive that serpent out of hiding. Drive that serpent out of hiding. Drive that serpent. I say fire. 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 I say fire on the soul. Fire on the soul. Burn up that wound. Burn up that stuff in the junk in your soul right now. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Jesus. 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 <clears throat> Why did I have you put fire on the soul? Remember, there's, there's Paul. He's carrying around the bundle of sticks, right? He's carrying around a what? Serpent and he don't know it. Like Vernon Delver. They didn't know. But because I'm a snake hunter, I knew. So there's Paul. Going through life. But when he throws that bundle on the fire, fire drives that snake out of its hiding place. He gets bit, but he's left unharmed. Look, you got to, you got to, Release the repentance and the blood of Jesus, because that's where the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. But you got to release fire, too, because fire drives that serpent out hiding where you can see it. And if you start soaking in fire, like, I have a fire soaker. Go get it. Play it at night. And then pretty soon you're going to have dreams where you see that serpent. You're going to be like Sherry, where the python comes and it swims right. And she just smacked it and it went right away, because she was soaking in my disc. And it exposed the python. And it had to leave. Okay? Fire exposes it. It drives it out of hiding. But it also heals your soul of stuff that you have in you that's in common with serpents. Where's that in the Bible? Matthew 3. Remember, what, 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 what's going on in Matthew 3? What's going on in Matthew 3 is John the Baptist is baptizing people, which is repentance, the blood, at the Jordan, right? Okay, I'm going to find it. Hold on. There it is. Matthew 3. And pretty soon who shows up? The Sadducees. Right? I'm so sad, you see. Because I'm religious. And in verse 7, Matthew 3, 7 says, But when he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said, Oh, you brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Uh, check that out. Why is he calling a bunch of men a brood of vipers? Because they were being controlled by snakes. Jesus called them brood of vipers too. Meaning those men, that's another thing that allows a snake attack. Religious spirit. Religious spirit. And basically John the Baptist and Jesus were saying, yo, swarming with snakes. Remember it says the 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 poison of asp is under the lips of those whose mouth is full of bitterness and cursing. Do you think their mouths are full of bitterness and cursing? Man, no doubt, right? So there's John the Baptist. He nails it. And then what does he say? Let me go to Matthew 3 so I can look at it. Hold on. Because we're going to get to the fire part. This message, I haven't preached this message for years. But I knew it was for tonight. When I prayed for three people in a row that had a snake on them, 
Like, you don't have to pray and go, what do I talk about tonight, Lord? Duh! Hmm, let me think about that. Okay, so he says, oh, let me get to New King James. Says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then they come, they show up. He sees the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He says, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. He's telling them to do what I just told you. First thing you do when you're being swarmed by snakes like these guys were, and controlled by snakes like these guys were, is you repent. Because at the cross is where Jesus crushed the head of the seed of the serpent, right? So he says that first, and then he says this. Now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree, he's talking to them, your tree, guys, your trees, that does not produce fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Right? Then he goes on, he goes, now I baptize you with water, but one who's coming after me, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out the threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Why is he saying this? He's telling you the two things you need to start doing to get rid of snakes. Repent and release fire. He said, Jesus is coming. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He's going to separate the chaff from the wheat and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. What does that mean? Inside every one of us. See, your spirit's perfect. But inside your soul of everyone, there's good stuff. That's the wheat. And there's bad stuff. That's the chaff. There's good things that you do. You, you're a, maybe you're a loving person. Maybe you're a faithful person, a tenacious person. Maybe you're a person with a servant's heart. Maybe you're a very generous, giving person. This is all good wheat. Jesus wants to keep that. He separates that from the chaff. says, I keep all that good stuff. I love that stuff. But then we all have bad stuff in us. We allow ourselves to get fearful or jealous or coveted, covetedness or, or to, to walk in bitterness or anger. That's the chaff. He said, when I baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, I not only baptize you like for spiritual gifts, I, I baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire so the fire can penetrate into your soul to burn up all the bad stuff in your mind, your will, and your emotions. All the wrong thinking, all the bad emotions, all the doubts, all the fears, everything. I'm going to separate the chaff from the wheat. And I'm going to burn up the chaff with unquenchable. And remember who he's talking to when he's preaching this message. Oh, you brood of vipers. Did you hear what I said? He's talking to the Pharisees and telling them, you guys are covered with snakes. Y'all are controlled by snakes. Guess what you need to do? Bear fruit of repentance and get baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Did you hear what I said? Look, fire is a soul healing power. Let's, let's look at that. And then we're going to call for a baptism. Sha. Sha. Okay, I'm reading from the Amplified. This is Acts 2 from the Amplified. Remember, all they're all in the upper room, waiting on the Lord. This is from the Amplified Classic. Verse 2 says, When suddenly there came a sound from heaven like the rushing of a violent tempest, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting, Verse 3, and there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed and which settled on each one of them. Verse 4, can we put that up on the board, verse 4? I don't know if we can, Amplified Classic, Acts 2, verse 4. I don't know, let's see if we can get it up there because I'd like you to see it with your own eyes. And then here, so here comes the fire. It sets on them, and then it says this. Nope, Acts 2. Four in the Amplified Classic. Amplified AMPC, AMPC, AMPC. There it is. And they were all filled, diffused throughout their, say it again, diffused throughout their, with the Holy Spirit and the fire. 
So where did the fire go? Did it just stay on top of their head and go, oh, look at me, I'm so hot. No, it went where? It diffused in their souls. To do what? To separate the chaff from the wheat and burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The chaff is the stuff that you have in common with all you brood of viper serpent spirits. Did you hear what I said? Fire cleanses the soul. I remember years ago, you know, like maybe eight, ten years ago now, everybody was walking around, they go, fire, 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 and everybody go. <laughs> it was kind of like this place. But they didn't really understand what they were doing. Like this place does. When they were doing that, they were releasing fire to do what? Cleanse the soul. Which causes what? Increase of integrity, character, moral purity, separating chaff from the wheat, burning up the chaff, removing the legal ground that the serpents have in your soul to be able to harm you. Did you hear Very important stuff. And again, who was John the Baptist talking to? Oh, you brood of vipers. He was telling them the keys to getting healed. You know, we think, oh, we don't have that religious spirit like the, like the, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees do. But, you know, judgment in our, in our minds is the same thing when you go into a, have you ever gone, I, I do it, I catch myself. You go into a meeting and you see somebody on the ground writhing or whatever. You see somebody dressing some way that you don't think they should be dressing. And in your heart, you judge them. But you don't know why they're writhing on the ground. You don't know the price of their oil. And you don't know, maybe they wore them clothes that maybe show a little bit too much cleavage because that's all they have. They got that from free from the neighbor, gave it to them. Or they got it out of the box in the back of the church. Or maybe they dress like that because they've been rejected their whole life and that's the only way they've ever been able to get attention or love of any kind. That's religious spirited too. We got to be careful. That's why when fire comes, a purity, a love comes. And those serpents start going away. I remember when I first read this scripture about John the Baptist talking to the brood of viper Pharisees. I thought, praise God, I don't have any religious stuff in me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what is it? It's very hot. It's fire. better let it chillax for a minute <laughs> and uh, I was going to say praise God I don't have that problem and the Lord said oh really you better get to the foot of the cross tonight and receive some fire and I was like ooh, ooh. so I was like oh I'm laying in the bed going I'm sorry God whatever it is I don't even know just show it to me Give me help, give me help, give me help, give me help. Help me, help me, help me. Fire, 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 fire. Right, fire, 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 fire. And I pretty soon I'll go into a trance. That's not a new age term, by the way. We had it first. It's in the Bible. Just saying. Everything was ours first. Just saying. Take it back from them witches. You know, I'm sick of witches doing things better than us. Oh, I'm done with that. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, so I'm doing that, and I see this vision. I see this vision, I'm walking along, carrying this little gray briefcase, looking all happy. And I knew my teachings, all my teachings were in this case. And I'm thinking, oh, my stuff is so good. Yeah, like, so good, man. And I, and I set it down this table, and then I, you know, undo the snaps, and I open it up. And instead of these beautiful pages with all this beautiful revelation, a snake jumps out at me and bites me. Mm -hmm. that's what you get Kate so I'm like ah! I, I come out of the I come out of the church I'm like ah! Ah! fire 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 God blood of Jesus fire fire and then my ear my left ear which had always been kind of deaf not deaf but lack of hearing like hearing loss starts burning and I'm like fire 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 and the 
Lord speaks to me, he goes, this is Psalm 50, 58, 4, I think it is. I have to look. And I, and I turn to it and he goes, and thou hast been bitten by the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. And I'm like, ha, 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 fire, 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 fire. And the ear is burning, burning, burning. And all of a sudden, poof, it pops right open. And I can hear clear in that ear. The deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. See, the Pharisees had the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. They were standing right in front of their Messiah, and they couldn't hear a word he said because of their religious beliefs. And everything else is connected with it. It's too broad for me to even, you know, think about it. It's like, wow. Then I started doing, you know, meetings, and people would have their ears open. Deaf ears would open. Ringing would open. Stop. There would be all kinds of healing for the ears. It's crazy stuff. Then eyes started happening. I was like, eyes? Why is eyes happening, Lord? He goes, well, what happened to Paul? I said, what about Paul? He said, Paul had scales on his eyes. I'm like, are you saying those are serpent scales? He goes, that's right. And they go, where's that in the Bible? And he gave me a scripture, and honestly, I haven't taught this for so long, I can't remember exactly which one it is. But it's the scripture where Paul talks about being, that he was a Pharisee among Pharisees, and he was trained by Gamil, who was the head Pharisee. He grew up under the religious, brood of viper Pharisee teachings, and that's what put scales in his eyes, so that he could not see. Now, I don't know if that person is here right now, but I think it was the last time I was here, we were, I was teaching on the light of Christ, and somebody came up here, and people were soaking this lady, she had cataracts. <laughs> And I had a revelation. She's up here, and they're praying for the cataract, and it was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. She goes, it's getting smaller and smaller. And I finally, they, they said, they came to me and they said, because I was having everybody pray. They came to me and said, well, we took her as far as we can took her, but, you know, she's got a little bit left, and she, we can't get rid of it. So I walked over, and I said, what's going on? And she said, there's just a little bit left. It looks like a scale, a fish scale. And I went, it looks like a scale? She goes, yeah, and I put my hand on her, I said, I judge, and I'm going to tell you about that right now. I said, I'll put fire on you right now, and, I, and, and your soul, for anything that you have in common, and I take that serpent to court, and I went, court, she goes, oh, it's gone. You want to heal some cataracts? Right. And I'm not judging anybody, we all have junk. The enemy feeds on our junk. He magnifies our junk. It's up to us to have strategy that's more than him. I don't know. Is that person here tonight? I didn't see nobody raise their hand, so. But yeah, it happened right up here. Was that you? Oh, praise, praise the Lord. Okay, amen. Whew. So we're going to backtrack for a minute. Just for a minute. And let's talk about how I started to say, and I judged that serpent. That's how I also prayed for Dale and Vern. I put the blood and fire on their soul first. And then I took, I, I had them repeat as, remember I had you all repeat, taking a serpent to court. What's that? Where's that in the Bible? How many of you know about the courts of heaven? Praise the Lord. You don't have to preach the whole doctrine. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. All right. <clears throat> and I just had this come to me about a year and a half, two years ago. I still haven't recorded the product, and I will. But that's also what we have the legal right to take serpents to court also. Remember I said in the beginning that the legal rights for these serpents to be able to attack you is in your soul first, but also in the court. Because in your soul, you have the legal landing strips of, you know, being bitter, being cursing, being, you know, religious spirited, all these things, right? But then in the court, the enemy goes in the court and he's constantly making accusations against us. That's why the Bible says that, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. The word accuser means to bring forth before a judge. So that means he goes before the judge of all the earth, God. Accuser of the brethren, he comes to accuse us night and day. 24 and 7. 24 and 7, right? So he'll bring accusations into the court, say, oh, they talk smack about people all the time. Oh, they're always texting about people. Oh, they're always gossiping. They're judging. Oh, they got a religious spirit. He goes in the court and he brings these accusations. But here, if we go back to the very first scripture I opened with in, in Luke 11, which is uh, verse 19, where Jesus says, behold, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions 
and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any wise harm you. Okay, let's put, if we can see that up in the New King James, that would be good. Okay, so what does that mean? The word authority there is exousia, exousia, exousia. And it means this according to Thayer's, the power of judicial decisions. Do you get what that means? That means that Jesus, the way that you trample on serpents and scorpions, is you get your soul healed, but also that you go into the court and you release your power to have judicial decisions executed against these serpents. There's your legal ground for taking snakes to court. That was a game changer for me because it went from me releasing fire on somebody for 15, 20 minutes to me saying, uh, how long was our prayer, Dell? About 10 minutes. 10 minutes total. And that included the neuropathy, right? Correct. That's right. Vern, how long was our prayer? Is he here? Okay. When he comes back. It wasn't very long. <clears throat> It, 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 it expedites things because that's what a courtroom decision does. It expedites the deliverance. You see what I'm saying to you? Now it says that we have been given this exousia, exousia power, power of judicial decisions to trample on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall in any wise harm us. The word harm there, when you look it up, guess what it means? It means this, to be a criminal, to have violated the law in some ways. You see, these serpents are criminals. They violated the law. They're harming you. They go to court and accuse you of violating the law and being a criminal. That's why you go to court and you put the blood of Jesus on your sin. You get your soul cleansed with fire. And it's like, you don't have no legal right now because Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, crush your head on the cross, seed of the serpent. You don't have no legal right. I'm in the court right now testifying, I repent, anything I have in common with you, like my complaining, and my grumbling, and my negativity, and my, and my resentment, and my bitterness, and all that, I, I confess it in the court, and God is faithful to forgive me, he takes his blood, and, and he, and he takes all the, the, the righteous, the requirements that were against us, and nails it to the cross, and makes a public spectacle of you, and I take you to court, and I release my exousia, exousia power right now, to bring a judicial decision against you. So you can't harm me anymore. I ask this court judge you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> this is important, and I'll tell you why. Especially important with Leviathan. Let's talk about Leviathan for a minute. That thing's busy. Isaiah 27. Amplified classic. You know, this oil is still fresh as ever. It's fresher than ever in this hour. This oil is fresh. In that day, the Lord will deliver Israel from her enemies and also from the rebel powers of evil and darkness. His sharp, unrelenting, great, and strong sword will visit and punish Leviathan, that swiftly fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting and winding serpent, and he will slay that monster that is in the sea. So Leviathan, the word Leviathan means dragon. In, some, in, in like Job, the book of Job, Leviathan is referred to as a crocodile. And here he's the twisting, fleeing serpent. Do you see he's land Land, air, and sea. Dragon, land, crocodile, sea, twisting, fleeing serpent. He's got all the bases covered. Okay? Now, it says that he's a twisting, fleeing serpent. What does that mean? Fleeing doesn't mean he runs away from you. He don't run away from you. Job says that he's a king. He's a king. He's a principality. We'll look at that scripture in just a minute. Okay? So he doesn't run away from you. He's not fleeing because he's scared of you. Because he ain't scared. He ain't scared. Okay? So what does it mean? Is a twisting, fleeing serpent. The word flee, if you look it up, it denotes the movement of a snake. You know how snakes go like this? They do this. That's what the twisting, fleeing serpent does. He works between people, churches, 
uh, uh, arguments, strifes, and he, and he goes and he darts back and forth, back and forth between people and marriages and husband and wife and family members and church members, and he twists. Twists the facts, twists the words, twists, and causes division and strife. I'll tell you what, I've seen that happen with me and the hubs. <clears throat> well, I'll say something to him and be like, I can't believe you just said that. I'll be like, what? What? Because he said blah, 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 this to me. I'll be like, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. I just heard you say that. I said, no, I didn't. And I'll go, I see you. I see you. Twisting. Twisting. He's caught more people. I would say 75% or more people got divorced because Leviathan was at work in a marriage. Now remember, what does Job say? He's the king of the children of pride. So, you know, you just ever have to have the last word. I used to do that. My husband and I'd be arguing on me. And I'd back out towards the door. All defiant looking. Ready to box. And he would say something. I'd go, oh yeah, well, blah, 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 blah. And then I'd run out the door and I'd slam it. Ha, I got the last word. <laughs> pride. You ever listen to somebody, somebody be talking to you, and you be thinking in your mind, you are crazy. I'm way smarter than you. You don't know what you're talking about. That's pride. Maybe they're saying something from their heart, and you're too prideful to discern that they're in pain. That's a twisting, fleeing serpent. All right? Leviathan is a powerful creature, and that's not all he does. I'm, we're going to talk about him more. But look. Leviathan, you have to take him to court. You cannot grab him, cast him. Remember Jesus said, take up serpents. And the word, that's the great commission. The word take up means to remove anything that's attached to anything, right? Okay. But the only, the only serpent you do never lay your hand on is Leviathan. You do not cast him down. You do not rebuke him. You do not bind him. Instead, you take him to court. And you let the court... You let the court put a restraining order on him and take him into imprisonment. What's the proof of that? And then we're going to go back to Isaiah 27. We're going to go to Job. And I want these up on the screen if possible because they're so powerful. Job 41 <clears throat> in the Amplified. Just start at verse 1 and we'll kind of pulse through. This is verse 1. Ready? Can you draw out Leviathan the crocodile with a fish hook? Or press down his tongue with a cord? The answer is no. Number two. Can you put a rope into his nose or pierce his jaw through with a hook or a spike? The answer is no. Number three. Will he make supplications to you begging you to be spared? Will he speak soft words to you and coax you to treat him kindly? No. He's a principality. He's not going to kiss your butt. He's going to whoop on you. Okay. Now let's go to this. Verse 7. Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Answer is eh, no. Now verse 8. Look at this. Lay your hand on him. Remember your battle with him and you will never do such an ill-advised thing again. This is a warning. You are not to lay your hand on Leviathan. If you do, you'll remember the battle. And you will not do such an ill-advised thing again. You don't bind Leviathan. You don't cast him down. You don't cast him out. I cast you. You don't do that. He is a principality. He is a king. He's probably one of the strongest demonic forces in the realm. So what do you do? Luke 11, you've been given exousia, exousia power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any wise harm you. You have the power of judicial decisions. Jesus has given it to you. That's what that word uh, authority or power means. It means the power of judicial decision. You are able to legally go into the court and say, I am being harassed by Leviathan. I repent for everything I have in my soul that's in common with him. 
I repent for pride. I release the fire of God to cleanse my soul of anything I have in common with that twisting, fleeing serpent. But now I ask this court right now to restrain him, to arrest him, and to remove him from my life because I will not touch him because when I touch him, I'll remember the battle and I'll never do such a, such a foolish thing again. People are like, we got the New Testament. We can cast down and rebuke Leviathan. I said, yeah, you can go after Leviathan. You have to do it in the right way in the biblical way, in the way that Christ told us to handle serpents and scorpions. Don't get cocky. Even warrior princess here doesn't get cocky with that. You'll get your butt kicked. I'm telling you right now. People have come up to me after I've told them this. They said, wow, you know, we didn't know uh, this. And, you know, me and my, this guy came up to me and said, me and my prayer partner, this man who I've been, I, I've known, been friends with him for like 20, 30 years. We would meet every Tuesday and pray. And he goes, and, and for like a month or so once, we decided that we were going to take on Leviathan. So we went after that thing. And we bound it, and we cast it down, and we cursed it, and we, 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 uh, we, we did all that. We went after it. And he said, and my partner, my friend, who had been, I'd been a childhood friend with all my life, died two weeks after that. And I had a stroke, and I'm still suffering the consequences of the stroke. You would not, that's just one of hundreds of stories. As, okay, now look, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. But in fact, close your eyes so you don't even have to see each other do this. But how many of you have foolishly laid your hand on Leviathan and rebuked and bound him and cast him? Raise your hand. Come on, hi, hi, hi. Let me see him. Let me see him. Be honest. Be real. Okay, see? Now, we're going to break that curse too. Let's do it right now. Ready? We step into the court right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We repent for stepping outside of our authority. Say, Lord, as I stand in this court, I face the long-standing accusations that Leviathan has brought against me for laying my hand on him and doing such a foolish thing. Lord Jesus, right now, as I stand in this court, <clears throat> I repent for overstepping my authority. Instead of picking up the authority, that Jesus gave me in Luke 11 to have the power of judicial decisions against these criminals, against these serpents that have been harming my life, including Leviathan. So as you cleanse me in my soul of doing this foolish thing and also cleanse the record in the court of every word I spoke out of my mouth foolishly as I warfared against this demonic serpent. We ask that the blood erase that record and remove that curse in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that now we've caught the enemy in the act and this court is going to arrest Leviathan, restrain him and imprison him, remove his control from my life, And remove the curse from my life. And restore sevenfold everything he's stolen from me. Now say, I put the blood of Jesus on pride in my soul. Lord God, forgive me for pride. For prideful thoughts about myself, about my family, my marriage, my business, my church, my ministry. Thinking I'm better. I know better. I'm smarter, I'm more clever than anybody else. Lord, I got to repent for pride. Cleanse me with your blood. Crush the head of that serpent at the cross. And fill me with your fire. Separate the chaff from the wheat. Burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Baptize me afresh with the Holy Spirit and fire. Baptize me afresh with the Holy Spirit and fire. Baptize me afresh with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire. Fire in my mind. Fire in my will. Fire in my emotions. Fire. Burning up the chaff. Burning up the chaff. Burning up the chaff. Fresh baptism.
Now cry out to the Lord for like three minutes, four minutes about a fresh baptism of fire. Come on. Jesus to fill your soul with the baptism of fire. Baptism of fire to burn away the flesh, to burn away pride, to burn away bitterness, to burn away anger, to burn away resentment, to burn away judgment, to burn away criticism, to burn away a religious spirit. I baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire right now. Holy Spirit and fire. 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 Holy Spirit and fire, be filled. Be filled. Let the fire diffuse into your soul. Let the fire diffuse into your soul. Let the fire at the upper room diffuse into your soul. Like it did in the upper room. Let it diffuse into your mind and cleanse you. Call it down to diffuse into your will and cleanse you. Call it down to diffuse into your emotions and cleanse you. Call it down. Call it down. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost 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 fire. Shut. Lay hands on your neighbor and start calling forth. Start releasing fire into their mind, will, and emotions. Come on. Lay hands on your neighbor. Start releasing fire on their mind, will, and emotions. Come on. Burn up that chaff. Command the chaff to burn up. Command that chaff to burn up. So that the brood of viper spirit won't be in control of you. Command that fire to burn up that chaff. 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 Burning. Burn it up. Burn it up with fire. 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 Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 She ain't my also eros. Tell him I'm so into you and the music about us. We ain't no also in the alley. So.
Jesus. Jesus. He's the man of fire. He's got fire in his eyes. Burning up that chaff. Burning up the serpent. Driving it out of hiding. A lot of you are going to have dreams tonight about snakes. You're going to see what you've been walking around with. Look, fire go. Fire drives snakes out of hiding. It burns up the chaff and the wheat. And it cleanses you of the stuff you have in common with Leviathan. I'll prove it. I don't say something unless I can prove it in the word. If you all know me, then you know that's true. Go back to, to Isaiah 27, Amplified Classic. And then I'm going to show you something else that's going to astound you. Seriously, astound you. Isaiah 27, Amplified Classic. We'll start at the first verse, and then we'll go to the second verse. Then we'll go to the third verse. Then we'll go to the fourth verse. Let's look at that up on the board. Let's have it, guys, if you can get it up there for me, please. In that day, the Lord will deliver Israel from her enemies and also from the rebel powers of evil and darkness. His sharp, unrelenting, and great and strong sword. Notice it says, his sharp, unrelenting, and great and strong sword will visit and punish Leviathan. Meaning, not yours, his. And you go into the court and his sword is released. His sword, not your sword. You use your judicial power to enact his sword. That swiftly fleeing serpent, Leviathan, that twisting, winding serpent, he will slay that monster that's in the scene. Next verse. Boom. Here Isaiah goes from talking about Leviathan to talking about us. And he uses a vineyard as an example of who we are. He says, in that day, meaning in the day that the Lord visits and punishes Leviathan, it will be said of the redeemed nation of Israel, a vineyard, beloved and lovely, sing a responsive song to it and about it. Verse 3, I, the Lord, am the keeper of the vineyard. I water it every moment, lest anyone harm it. I guard it and keep it night and day. He's calling us a vineyard, and he's saying he waters the vineyard. He doesn't let anyone harm the vineyard. He guards and keeps the vineyard night and day. Then verse 4 says this, wrath is not in me. Now watch this. With the briars and thorns, does a vineyard have briars and thorns? Right? With the briars and thorns, the wicked internal foe were lined up against me in battle. I would stride in against them, meaning the briars and thorns of the wicked internal foe, and I would burn them up together. What is he saying? He's like, look, Leviathan, I'm going to visit him and punish that twisting, fleeing serpent with my sharp, unrelenting sword. And I do this to protect Israel, my people, my vineyard. But my vineyard has briars and thorns. And then in parentheses in the Amplified, it says what those briars and thorns represent. The wicked, internal foe. You see, you're a beautiful vineyard. But you got briars and thorns. You got junk in your trunk. You got a wicked internal foe. You got pride. You got bitterness. You got offense. You, 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 you got resentment. You got anger. You got stuff inside you that's allowing Leviathan the legal right to assault you. But God says, I'm going to take those briars and thorns, the wicked internal foe that's in my beautiful vineyard, and I'm going to burn them with fire. This is how part how God slays Leviathan, that twisting, fleeing serpent with his sharp, unrelenting sword. We take him to court, but we also fill our souls with fire. And it burns up the wicked internal foe. It burns up the junk in the trunk that we have in common. It burns up the chaff and leaves behind the wheat. Notice the fire is said by John the Baptist. You got to repent. And get baptized in fire, you brood of viper Pharisees. And now God is saying the same thing. Saying, you got to receive fire when we're dealing with Leviathan. How many of you get where I'm going? Are you picking up what I'm throwing down? Are you picking up what I'm throwing down? 
Now let's look at this. And then we're almost there. Go to Job 1. Look, Leviathan's doing way more than you know. And he's also using trauma. To have the legal right to assault you. Job 1. Do you remember what Job, all the trauma Job went through? He's got, like, what happened. The enemy came. Satan stirred up these, these enemies to come and steal all his money, all his wealth in the form of all his livestock, right? The same enemy killed all his servants. So he killed the servants. So Job has lost all his staff, all his help, all his peeps in the church, in his, all his people. And he's lost all his wealth, all his provision, all his herds. Then what? Satan creates a whirlwind that knocks down a house that all his children are gathered in and kills them all. This is a lot of trauma. Chapter 2. Then what happens? Satan strikes Job's body with painful boils. More trauma. In the last couple years, we've already, it was, it was like people go through trauma every single day on a normal basis. And then in the last two years, with the pandemic and all that, it went from normal crazy, crazy trauma to worldwide, over-the-top, inconceivable trauma, political trauma, physical trauma, sickness trauma, pandemic trauma, mask trauma, every trauma, drama, baby mama you can think of, right? Now, how does trauma affect it? For Job, trauma wounded his soul. We know that because like 23 times in the book of Job, he goes, my soul is vexed, my soul is mourning, my soul is poured out, my soul is bitter. And whenever he said that things, he was talking about all the trauma he went through. So that trauma had wounded him. Now, in chapter 3, look what happens to him. Go to that right now, chapter 3. And I'm just going to skim through it and then I'll we'll, we'll put some scriptures up on the board. What happened is, Job got so traumatized by everything he went through that he got bitter from the trauma. Then he called down curses and death upon himself and even called down Leviathan on himself. It's a pattern. Listen to it. Verse 1, I'm just skimming through now. After this, Job opened his mouth. After this, meaning after what? After all the trauma that Job had been through. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed. Here comes the witchcraft connection. Cursed his birthday. And Job said, let the day perish when I was born and the night which was announced there is a man child conceived. I'm reading from the Amplified. Verse 7, yes, let that night be solitary and barren. Let no joyful voice come into it. Verse 8, let those who curse it, curse the day. Those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. Verse 10. Because it shut not the doors of my mother's womb, nor sorrow, nor trouble from my eyes. Why was I not still born? Why did I not give up the ghost when my mother bore me? Verse 12. Why did the knees receive me or the breast that I should suck? Verse 16. Why was I not miscarried? hidden and put away as an infant who never saw the light. Verse 20. Why is light of life, now here he's telling us, why is light of life given to those who are ministry in li ministry in life to the bitter in soul? He had let all the trauma make him so bitter that he's now cursing the day he was born and even asking for those who are skilled in cursing, meaning witches, loose Leviathan on that day. Verse 21, those who long and wait for death. But it comes not who dig for death more than hidden treasure. Now he's been so traumatized and got so bitter by the trauma, he's wishing that he could die. Saying death is a treasure. Next verse, who rejoice exceedingly and are elated, elated when they see the grave. How many of you have been through so much trauma that you got bitter about it, that you got so bitter about it that you just said stuff like, that's it, I'm done. Just take me to be with Jesus. I just want to be with the Lord. Come on, raise your hand. Let me see. Do you understand when you did that, 
Witches had the legal right to curse you, and Leviathan is the muscle that carries out the curse. You thought it was bad before. You just, you just, you just, oh, you don't know what you did. Did you hear what I said? Notice he says stuff like, curse my mother's breast, curse my mother's womb. Do you know I lost my uterus to Leviathan? Who carried out a curse against me. He comes and brings cancer on the breast, cancer of the womb, cancer of the ovaries. He comes at you, ladies. That's why I said, I wish I was miscarriage. Miscarriage, abortion, who do you think is the spirit behind that? Witches are cursing, and Leviathan is carrying it out. Let's put up that scripture, verse 8, I believe it is, in the Amplified Classic. Job 3, verse 8. Look at this. Let those who curse it, who is skilled at cursing? Say it loud. So let those who curse it, meaning witches, curse the day. Those who are what? Skilled in rousing up Leviathan. Do you understand that witches and warlocks and wizards and sorcerers are actually skilled? They work hand in hand. Leviathan. They are skilled. They have skills to harness the power of Leviathan, the dragon, the twisting, fleeing serpent, the crocodile. And we're helping them by letting the trauma get us so bitter that we're like, I wish I was dead. I wish I could just go be with Jesus. I've had it. I'm done. Take me off this planet. I wish I was never born. You better wish something else. Because you are releasing witches to curse you. Those witches and warlocks and sorcerers who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. He's the muscle. They curse. He carries it out. He's the enforcer. I know all about that. Y'all better watch out. Look, witches always work with serpents. Acts 16, the woman with the spirit of divination who got her master's much gains. That word divination, that's a witchcraft term, right? Divination. Go look up what it means. In the Greek, it means one word. Ready? Python. Witches always work with snakes. Y'all been missing it. Y'all trying to go after witches and all this, but you're not getting your soul healed of the stuff that you have in common because rebellion is is as a sin of witchcraft. And... Simon the sorcerer had a bitter iniquity in his heart. You got to get your soul healed. So there's no landing strip for the witches to curse you. The causes curse cannot alight. Where do you think it alights? In your soul and in the court. That's why you need fire all the time. Job cursed the breast of his mother. You know, like, I don't know how many years ago this was now. I started to form an indentation in my breast. It was about the size, it was about as deep as the tip of my pinky, which is probably about, I don't know, a half inch maybe or less. Started to form in my breast. And I was like, what is this, Lord? And so I was looking up online and uh, saying stuff like, well, if your breast changed shape like that and has indentations or stuff like that, it could be cancer. So I'm like, all right. You got to tell me what's going on. So I was on tour in Ohio or something like that. I get done with the meeting. It's like in the middle of the night. I come home. I said, what is this? And what am I supposed to do? He goes, I want you to soak in fire all night. So I put on Misty Edwards, all-consuming fire. All-consuming fire. You're my heart's desire. Burning flame of love. Come baptize us. Come baptize us. So I put it on, and I'm up in this house somebody's house at like midnight going oh consuming fire singing right they must have thought what in the world we let her stay at our house mistake and I'm singing all my might and then like it's getting later and later I'm like oh consuming fire you're my heart's desire burning flame of and then I'd wake up and go Allah come baptize us 
And I just kept that up all night long. Do you know that you have to be tenacious in this hour? You have to be tenacious in this hour. You got to be Zena. Okay? So then in the morning, I have this vision. First, I have this vision that I've got this bloody bandage wrapped around my breast and my arm. And I, I looked up bandage, and it says, a piece of linen cloth used to heal a wound. The Lord said, you had a wound in your soul that needed to be filled with fire to be healed. And then I go, okay, now what? And then he shows me the next vision. The snake up on its, like standing upright like that on its tail or whatever, with the triangular jaw, which means it's their poisonous, striking at me. And I go, what's that? And he goes, that's the snake that's been pumping you full of venom to try to give you breast cancer. Oh, I got mad. Oh, I got mad. Oh, I got mad. I said, you know what? Oh, you know what? I said, you know what? I said, you know what? I said, you know, I've been attacked by many things, but now you touch the goods and the papa is not going to be happy. So the Lord says, Put on a protective metal glove and prophetically pull that snake. Take, we are supposed to take up serpents. Iro, remove anything that's attached to anything. He goes, once you see the head, you got dominion over it. He said, that fire not only healed your soul, the wound in your soul that allowed it to land on you in the first place, but it drove that snake out of hiding so you could see it. And now you can see the head. Once you see the head, you can grab it, pull it off, take up that serpent, pull it off your breast and throw it. It wasn't Leviathan, it was a poisonous serpent. So I had the legal right. So I took the glove, I grabbed that sucker, pulled it off, I threw it into the pit and commanded it to burn and never return. Okay, so then I go home. Three nights in a row, I'm balled up like this on my bed because my boob hurts so bad. And I'm like, what did happen? Did I piss it off? What is this? Right? Three nights in a row, and God doesn't say nothing to me. And I'm like, what's up? The fire, 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 fire. He tells me, third day, he says, now, he's, at the end of the first day, he says, now start taking communion. So I'm taking communion and going, fire, fire, every night, three nights in a row. I get up in the morning on the third day, on the third day, walk into the bathroom to take a shower, get undressed, look in the mirror, and all of a sudden I realized that the pain was not because the serpent was still there. It was because the flesh was growing back because that indentation completely filled in and I was healed. <laughs> I had a woman, I can't remember her name, it was in Atlanta, and uh, Pat, that was her name, Pat. She had a fourth stage cancer walnut-sized tumor in her breast. I hadn't talked to her. I didn't know. She was the intercessor for the church, but I hadn't met her. I didn't know. I'm teaching this teaching. I'll send out the middle of the teaching. I go, somebody, your breast is getting healed. Boom. She said she felt that serpent come off her breast. So she started poking around, and that walnut-sized tumor, it completely disappeared. Her husband was this really tall guy, and she was a tiny little woman. So she came up on the stage to testify. And her husband is ran up. He's bawling. He picks her up and he gives her this big squeeze. And her little legs were going like this. And I found out after this, she started crying. And uh, he set her down. And she looked up at him and she goes, and it didn't even hurt. Because that was their signature hug. They'd done their whole marriage. But since the tumor came, he'd not been able to hug her like that at all. So as soon as it was gone, he went up there and he squeezed her and he said, and she goes, and it didn't even hurt. And he bawled his guts out. <laughs> yeah. Curse of the breast and the womb. And Leviathan carries out the curse. Jesus. Did y'all get your communion? We're about to take it. We're about to take it. But as we do, we do our final activation. We're going to get healed of trauma. And we're going to get healed in our finances. Go to Acts 16. <sighs> Jesus. I'm 
Jesus. I'm reading from the Amplified. Starting at verse 16. It says, and as we were on our way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who was possessed by a spirit of divination, claiming to foretell future events and to discover hidden knowledge. And she brought for her owners much gain by her fortune telling. She kept following Paul and the rest of us, shouting loudly, These men are the servants of the Most High God. They announce to you the way of salvation. And she did this for many days. Then Paul, being sorely annoyed and worn out, and turned and said to the spirit within her, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very moment. But when her owners discovered that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught a hold of Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities in the forum, the marketplace where trials are held. And when they brought them before the magistrates, they declared, these fellows are Jews and they are throwing our city into great confusion. They practice the customs which are unlawful for us Romans to accept or observe. The crowd also joined in in the attack. And the rulers tore their clothes off them and commanded that they be beaten with rods. And when they had been struck with many blows, they threw them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. <laughs> I stumbled upon this story because a very good friend of mine who was very famous, who if I said their name you would know, called me one day in a panic. She said, I just got out of the car with my business partner. And as I looked over at my business partner, she had a python, a green python wrapped around her. And she goes, what does that mean? I said, well, I don't want to say until I know. So I'm going to ask the Lord. So I hung up the phone and went into prayer. And I heard the word gains. I looked it up. The woman with the spirit of divination brought for her masters much gains. Illegal gains. So that word divination there, that's witchcraft, right? Are we all getting the communion? Is that what we're doing? Good. Y'all got it? Okay. Okay. Got for her masters gains. Illegal gains. So if the, so that means what? The snake was in charge of the money. Because divination means python. In fact, the snake is the one who was talking to Paul and Silas all those days, acting holy, saying, these men are here to show you the way to the Most High God. Acting like, like, that sounds very holy, doesn't it? Doesn't it? But it was a snake. I love how Paul, it took him a few days to catch it, to get it. So that makes me feel not so stupid. It's like, oh, it took Paul like three or four days to figure out it was a snake talking to him instead of a woman. That it wasn't really God, it was a demonic presence. Then he snapped out of me, he cast it out. Made that demon so mad that what? They were dragged into what? The marketplace where trials are held. Did you see that? Verse 19, y'all are awake, right? Put up verse Acts, 9, Acts 16, 19. But her owners discovered that the hope of their prophet was gone. They caught a hold of Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities in the forum, the marketplace, where trials are held. You don't get it. Luke 11 says, Jesus has given us uh, exousia, authority. To trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall in any wise harm us. The word harm means a criminal who's broken the law in some way. They accuse us of being criminals and breaking the law in some way. And they take us to court. You know that whoever doesn't show up to court loses? Y'all haven't been showing up to court to take Python to court. Python has been going to the place where trials are held and accusing you of doing stupid things with your money. Not being a good steward. Spending too much on your shoes. Sneaking money behind your husband. Not bringing in your ties. Whatever it is. Gambling in your history. Gambling now. Spending money on your dope. Whatever it is. The enemy's taking you to the place where trials are held. You got to show up and take that python to court. Do you understand me? Now, it just so happens that my friend, her business partner, found out that she'd had 13 failed businesses in the past. She started 13 of them, and they all failed. 
and that her family's from overseas and they owned a string of casinos. Python. Illegal gains. Illegal gains. So she bailed from the business agreement. Praise God. That python will squeeze out your gains. And that doesn't mean just your gains in your money. It can mean your gains in your money, your profits, your ability to open your ministry, the ability to open your business, the ability to have things take off, to be launched. If you got something squeezing you down and preventing you from succeeding in some area, you could have a python on you. It could also squeeze the life out of you. That's what pythons do, right? They are so slick, right? They can go through 30 foot long python, 800 pounds, can silently slither through the trees. You never even hear them coming until they're dropped around over you, wrapped up on you, and slowly squeezing the life out of you. First time I ever encountered a python, that's what happened. I saw it in my garage in the spirit. I was like, what's that? What's that? that was a snake. It was a python. What's it doing there? And that whole time, for like a week or two, I was like, oh God, I just want to quit. Oh man, I'm so done. I'm so fried. Yeah, that's like Job 3, hello. Curse the day I was born. I'm so traumatized and bitter. I was there, and the snake was wrapped around me, squeezing the life out of me. And I didn't know it until the Lord showed me all this revelation. Then I go to visit A.A. A. Allen's granddaughter. You know who A.A. A. Allen is. Go to visit his granddaughter. She's powerful. She's like, she's like these peeps right here. She lives with people in her house all the time. She like, picks up strays on the street and brings them in, loves them to, loves them to life, right? And so she picks me up at the airport. She gets out of the car, stomps to the back, flings the back thing open, takes my suitcase and flings it in, slams the door. And I said, how's it going? <laughs> she goes, terrible. She goes, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've never felt like this before in my life. She goes, I just feel like I want to quit. I just feel terrible. I feel like I don't have any life left in me. And I'm looking at her. She's driving. And all of a sudden, I see this green python wrapped around her. It turns its head towards me and sticks out its tongue at me. And I went, I got you. Snake hunter. Snake hunter. You didn't know? You didn't know? Snake hunter. Hello. Man, I said, how can I tell A.A. A. Allen's granddaughter she got a python wrapped around her? So the Lord said, you better go do it. So I go tell her right before the meeting. I said, well, dude, I think I know what's wrong with you. She's like, what? I said, you got a python wrapped around you. She goes, get it off. Get it off. So I wrapped that thing, threw in the pit, commanded it to burn in every turn. And she jumped up. She ran up to the front. She grabbed the mic. It was a woman's meeting. She goes, everybody stand to your feet. We're all covered with snakes. So it squeezes the life out of you. It squeezes your gains out of you. It squeezes your profit out of you. No wonder you want to quit. I remember I was on the phone one morning with this famous apostle, and I could never remember his name. It's that guy from Brazil or something. And they were interceding against Python and Leviathan. And I was on this prayer call with them. So I'm like, you know, back in the background, what's happening? Blah, 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 praying. Uh, releasing fire and I go into this trance and I see this vision of this huge building and I knew it represented everyone's homes and churches and ministries and everything and, and, and as I walk up to it there's this door on the side a big metal door and it's got this big lock on it and I walk up to that door and I reach out towards the lock and it just because of the revelation I'm carrying the lock just falls off so like I'm like okay so I, I reach for the handle and as I open the door I hear the Lord shout in the, in the vision, he shouts, stand back. And I open the door and I like throw myself against the wall of the outside of the building. And I look through the crack of the door and I see this gigantic python sliding, slithering down the hallways of this building. And then as I'm standing in the door like this, it comes out, all of it. And it, and it goes away from the, the building. And I hear the Lord say, python has left the building. A week later, I got our very first ever $100,000 donation. I went to go Dr. Miles. I preached this message to Dr. Miles. He's standing up in the front as we're unwinding the python. And he, he's got this text. He, 
You know, it's like, hey, we're in the middle of a meeting, and why are you answering your text? He whips out his phone. He says, wow, this, this king in Africa just gave me a beachfront property as my retirement for the future. Right when we unwound Python. This is real. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple videos, and then we're going to activate. Okay. What do we got? Let's have some vids, guys. Thank you, Lord. My name is Pat Fraley. What happened, Pat? Uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer about two or three weeks ago. And... Um, uh, with a pretty significant size mass, uh, which has been very uncomfortable and uh, painful, actually, and throbbing. And I have been praying for probably about the last six or seven days for the Lord to burn that cancer out. And um, I, I, I have to be very careful how I test that here, but I've been squ squishing myself every way that I can uh, in public with a still be appropriate, and I can't feel a thing. So... She wouldn't have a test, by the way, and it was negative. Jesus. Pat. Oh, my God. I'm so awesome. Oh. Wait. Get up here, Pat. I ain't done with you, girl. Just to confirm. Come back up here. Normally, if you were to squish around and do... Well, I just got a good hug, and I didn't feel a thing. And you normally would. Yeah, in fact, when he was hugging me one time, I, I said, that really hurts. And he, he just said, well, maybe it's because you've been squished by the mammogram so many times. And I said, no, it just hurts. Because of cancer. Uh, yeah, the, the, because of the size of the mass. And, and I just saw you have the big... Your husband is bawling. It's so good. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Jesus! What a relief! Oh my God! Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! All right, Pat, we're expecting you to get your test, and we know it's going to be negative. Amen. I want you to take a picture of it and send it to us. All right, the test, so we can show the world. Amen. One more big, huge shout. Yeah, I had to clarify it was the test, not the boob. All right. Okay, now, okay, now we're gonna. Okay, check this out. Okay, now we're gonna play this. This is. Let's play the one with the eye, snake in the eye. Watch this so, thing. My name is Robin. This is crazy. Uh, we're here in Rawls. Oh, no, that's not it. It's a guy. And he pulls a snake out of his eye. For real. Do we have it? No, no, that's not it. It's the guy at the, under the tent. And he pulls a snake out of his eye. Oh, do we not have that? Ah! Okay, I'll tell the story real quick. We have another video, don't we? Snake video? How many snake videos do we have? We only have one? That's not true, is it? Oh, shoot. Darn it. Okay. All right. So, okay, I'll tell this story then. All right. I, we do have a video of this, though. Okay. So this guy, from when he was a kid, this hard ball would form over his eye. Do you have it? Do you? Dun, 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 Secret dun. Service dude. Okay. So just for the people, say your name again. I'm Steve. So, Steve, you had, <laughs> the FBI guy, uh, so you had something happen, too, um, not at the meeting, but pr prior to this, but you were soaking with fire and you saw a serpent. Tell us the details of what happened and what issue you, you were dealing with. I basically, Christine gave me a call. You spoke at a conference in Kansas City, and she was all excited, and she said about snakes, and you got to get the CD, and it's awesome, and it's great. So we had another conference. She gave me your soaking CD and the whole conference. So 
I had a problem with my eye. It started getting sore and a bump. And since I was young, I would get this this thing, uh, Shizan or something that basically would grow, would get huge, and would fold over. And they would have to literally cut it open, peel it out. I got have scars all over my eyes. Wow. They told me this is something you know that just happens to certain people. You're always going to have it. So you had that since you were a child. As a child. So every few years, I would have to go to the doctor, be awake. They'd put this thing on my face. I'd see the scalpel come in, slice, scoop it out, get rid of it. So, That's enough to traumatize anyone, not mention a child, don't you yeah, think? Complete trauma. So I know right away when I would feel it, it would be this little bump, and then it gets bigger and bigger, folds over, disgusting looking. So we went to a conference. I got the CDs. So started putting the CD Fire CD on overnight and just let it go overnight. And I drive a lot. So at one point I was driving and it was about the snakes. And I started seeing in the spirit, I saw this thing slithering in my eye, but I just saw kind of like when a snake goes like this, you just see the back of it and just different parts of it. And it would just keep doing it. And in the background, you're yelling fire, you know, and explaining it. Go to a stop sign. And it, I had blurred vision out of that eye, too. That's what happens. And it forms. It was this hard ball. So all of a sudden, I'm seeing all that. And then I see the head come out and come to come at me. I grabbed the head, threw it. But when I pulled it, it was still there. I could see it. So I'm using my other hand. I'm pulling it out. And it was like a huge boa constrictor. So it was super long when you grabbed it with the wand. Yeah, I pulled full length and it was still coming out. So I grabbed the other, oh my God. threw it down, started screaming fire, going to the abyss, never come back. And then I look up and I see people looking at me and I'm like, hey. <laughs> and then I put, I put my hand. Just removing a snake, stand by. It's all good. <laughs> so the pain instantly was removed. I put my finger up on my eye and the solid thing was gone. It was like the pocket was completely removed and completely, completely gone. Come on, that's amazing. Oh my God. That's so cool, Steve. The secret service. Come on, you can't make this stuff up, man. Who, do you think that dude, that guy would, he's an FBI guy. He used to work with the FBI. Do you think that he would ever, ever think that that Shizon was from a snake in his eye? Hello? What else are they doing? You hear what I'm saying? This is real. Okay, so now we're going to do two things. I want you to prepare offering because part of the thing with Python, squeezing out your gains in your finances, your ministry unable to grow, your vision unable to take off, you're, you know, you can't get rid of the debt or whatever else, is that there's something in the bloodline or in your life where, you know, gambling or whatever. You know, I, I, I want to share this briefly. I won't say the name, but the lady I prayed for that had the mutilation healed, I also removed a snake off her head. And um, I said, I see a roulette wheel. Because she said, I have headaches and I have this ear thing. I said, I see a roulette wheel. Her husband was a gambling addict and, and gambled away a million dollars of their money and left them broke. And I was like, that's what's around your head. It's Python. Because it's connected to the money and it's also connected with our health. So I want you to prepare an offering because we're going to bring our offering up. And then we're going to activate and get heal of the trauma that you've been through. Because how many of you have been in that pattern? Were you in so much trauma that you let yourself get bitter about it and you even said something foolish like, I just, I quit, I'm done. I just want to go be with Jesus. Come on, let me see. Hands, 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 really high hands. See? That's when you allowed those who are skilled at cursing to curse you, those who are skilled in rousing up Leviathan. I just had a snake attack come upon me a few weeks ago. There's a new level of snake attack in the world. And during the night, witches came, were outside my house sending curses against me with Leviathan to grow growths in my breast. 
I could actually feel them trying to implant them in the natural. I could feel it. And I knew what they were trying to do because I had been through like, you would not believe the warfare lately. I had a serpent come in and shut down my broadcast two weeks ago, took me off the air, squeezed out my gains in media, took my show off the air. I broadcast live, not on just social media. I broadcast live to the nations via Faith, Faith Television Network every week. Shut down the broadcast. There is a new level of snake attack. I want you to sow a seed against the snake attack. I want you to sow a seed to break through for every seed that was planted for unrighteous, unlawful gains. Because the woman with the spirit of divination, which means python, God for her masters much gains. So she brings illegal gains, and that might be in your bloodline or in your life. And then that python squeezes out your legal gains. And he takes you and drags you, strips you naked like he did Paul, into the marketplace, the places where trials are held. We're going to take that serpent and we're going to take Leviathan to court because we've been given exousia, exousia power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any wise harm us. That means the power of judicial decrees. We've been given that right. So we're going to get our souls healed to trauma. <clears throat> We're going to plant a seed in the court. We're going to break and we're going to take those spirits to court where we have the legal right to do so. And we're also going to take communion because communion represents what Christ did on the cross, the place where the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. And you're going to decree, and this is the thing, from now on as you leave this, this, this wild woman's conference, I want you to start taking communion three, four, five times a day for the next couple of weeks, even a month to cleanse your body of any toxin that that snake has pumped into you. That's what I did with Vern and Dell. I commanded the toxin to be expelled from their bodies. They had the lumps. And we took communion and I said, this is the bread of life. It's going to bring, as the living bread, the flesh of Christ comes in, where the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent because it's the cross. The toxins are going to be pushed out. That's what I did when I had the hole in my breast. I pulled that serpent off after I soaked my soul with fire. And then I took communion. And my flesh was rebuilt. As the toxin was pushed out. Okay, get to prepare your offering right now. And I'll probably look like the worship team to come up. Hold on to your communion. Just hold it in your hand. How many of you have your offering ready? Are you ready? Okay. We're going to bring it up in a minute. Get ready for that. Now I want you to sit. And I want you to let the Holy Spirit remind you of any trauma you've been through. Okay. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit. Sweep through them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And show them. What traumas are they still holding on to? What traumas have wounded them? 
You know, we go through trauma and we, 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 we're, we're survivors. So we think, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But when deep down that trauma has hurt you, it's wounded you. It's made you bitter. It's made you wish you could just give up. So let the Lord minister. What is it? What, have you been through a divorce? Is something with your kids? Did you lose your job? Have you lost your home or your, your, your car? Or, are you out of money? Have you been going from one place to another? What? Uh, did you have a car accident? What's the traumas you've been through? Let the Holy Spirit bring them to your remembrance right now. Put your hand on your heart and your belly and say, Lord God, baptize me with more fire, more fire. Burn up these traumas. Burn up the memory of every trauma from my mind, from my emotions. Burn them up so it doesn't control my will. Fill my soul with fire, fire of God, fire of God. Burn up the wicked internal foe that's in my vineyard. Burn with fire the briars and the thorns. All of the excuses, all of the trauma, all of the grief, all the depression, all the anxiety. All the fear, all the pain, all the regret, burn it with fire, God. Burn it with fire. Cleanse me of the chaff. Cleanse me right now. In Jesus' name. Have you been through a trauma of, of uh, one sickness after the other? One sickness after the other. It's wounded your soul. Remember, remember, Job got sick. And then he said, my soul is bitter, my soul is vexed, my soul is mourning. Say, Lord, heal me with your fire from the traumas of COVID and deaths and elongated sicknesses and troubles and pains and illnesses and infirmities and loved ones dying. Burn it all away, Lord. Burn away that trauma those wounds. Burn it away now. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. 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 Now turn towards your neighbor and ask them, what traumas have you been through? Ask each other that question and then release fire on that, the wounds that those traumas made in your soul. Come on. Go. Go. Tell them what you've been through. Share with each other and then release fire. Ask Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Ask him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire on those traumas. Burn up the trauma. Burn up the trauma right now, Lord. Burn up that memory. Burn up that grief. Burn up that resentment. Burn up that depression. Burn up that bitterness, Lord. Burn it up. Burn up the grief. Burn up the crises. Burn up the stressors. Burn it up, Jesus. Burn it. Burn it with fire. Burn it with fire. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it with fire. Burn it with fire. Burn it with fire, 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 fire. Burn up that trauma with fire. Burn it, burn it, burn it with fire, fire, fire. Burn it with fire, burn it with fire. Shout. With fire, 
fill my heart with fire. So. Baptize my heart. Baptize my heart with fire. With fire. Sure. Baptize. Baptize. Baptize my heart with your fire. Sh 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 Shake Burning up with fire. Holy 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 fire. Okay, now we're going to open a case. Baptize my heart with fire. Okay, ready? We're going to open a case now. Ready? We're going to step into the court. Everyone rise. Take your communion in one hand and your offering in the other. Hold your offering up and say, Lord Jesus, I come into court right now according to the authority that Jesus has given me in Luke 11. I have exosia power, the power of judicial decisions that I can use to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy shall in any wise harm me. Lord Jesus, I have lodged my repentance for everything I have in common into the record of this court. So I ask that the books of my life be opened and that every misdeed that's recorded in the books that has been filed as an accusation against me by these demonic serpents and these witchcraft spirits be covered with the blood and eradicated and expunged from the record because on the cross Jesus Christ crushed the head of the seed of the serpent he is the seed of the woman who crushes the head of the seed of the serpent this prophecy is coming to pass now in this court 
I thank you, Lord Jesus, that this court is releasing a subpoena to summon into its presence every witchcraft spirit, every sorcery spirit, every wizardry spirit, every divination spirit, and every hexing spirit and cursing spirit. And it's calling into its presence all serpent spirits, including brood of viper spirits, deaf adder spirits, serpent scale spirits, poisonous serpent spirits, python spirits, and leviathan. I will not touch him, because if I did, I would remember the battle and never do such a foolish thing again. Instead, I will execute and enact my powerful judicial decisions against that spirit and all serpents. Lord God, my sins are under the blood. My soul is filled with fire. And now this court must find me innocent of all charges. And I request that a restraining order and an arrest order would be released against these witches and against these serpents. And I decree the curses that have been spoken against me and my family can no longer land because the causeless curse cannot alight. And because my testimony in this court is that Jesus already became a curse for me. So that fugitive Leviathan must be arrested. These serpents can no longer enforce the curse because the curse is non-existent. I break it off my breast. I break it off my womb. I break it off my body. And I repent for becoming bitter for all the trauma I've been through. And I break my agreement with the words of death where I call down curses on myself by wishing I was stillborn, by desiring death more than, the, more than treasure. I break my agreement with those words. I will never say them again. So witches and Leviathan have no legal right to curse me or enforce the curse. I stand here vindicated by the blood of Jesus and by the fire of God. Now take out your communion. Take the body. And say, I further testify. This is the bread of life. The living bread that came down from heaven to bring life to the world. This is the flesh of Jesus Christ. When I eat it and when I drink his blood, I'm doing it in remembrance of what he accomplished on the cross when the seed of the woman crushed the head of the seed of the serpent. And as I eat the bread, it will diffuse life into my body and push out and destroy and dissolve and dissipate and eradicate the venomous toxin that these serpents have been pumping into my body. All the toxins will have to come out as I eat the bread of life. I take it now. And the life is in the blood. When the blood was shed, the serpent was crushed. This is a sign of the cross. It is the fulfillment of the prophecy. It is the sealing of this covenant and of this case that I have filed 
against these witches, warlocks, and serpents. And I decree as I drink it, it will cleanse me even further of all toxins, of all sin, and it will bring healing to my soul. So I partake the power of the blood now. And I'm cleansed of all sickness and disease and pain and disorder. In Jesus' name. Now we're going to play. And I want you to come up and plant your seed. And as you do, stay up in front. And we're going to worship the Lord. And the fire of God is going to fall and cleanse you further of anything else that you have. Bring your cups up too, please, when you bring your, your offering. And we're going to stay up here and we're going to worship the Lord as we close out tonight so that the fire of God can fall and deliver you of the control of these serpents that have come to harm you. And I don't know where the, where are the baskets. Oh, oh, the baskets. Yes, I see. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Fire on these offerings. Fire on these offerings. We plant our seed in the holy court right now. Our seed going to speak for us against the attack of the serpent and of the witchcraft. The seed is speaking for us now in the holy court, releasing power for us right now. Thank you, Lord. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Thank you, Lord. We ask that the court read these seeds out loud in the court and record them in the annuals and the books as a seed planted against the assault of these demonic spirits right now and that the angels of the Lord be released to gather up these serpents and to pull them off and to remove them from their power and control in the name of Jesus now in the name of Jesus now in the name of Jesus now Let's start singing now. Yes. Baptize my. Let's bring the lights down and let's begin to worship the Lord. Jesus. Spread over so you can give your fellow uh, brethren room to come up and worship and bring their offering, please. Move over and let the Lord give them space to come in. Let them come in and bring their seed right now. Let them come in and bring their seed and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's hit it. Go. Yes.
start decreeing you are filled with fire say I break trauma for you say I break trauma for you I break it I break trauma I break trauma off of you with fire I break that trauma off of you with fire I break it I break that trauma off of you with the fire of God right now be filled with fire be filled with fire I break it off of you you will not be traumatized anymore I break that I break it I break that assignment of trauma. I break it. I break that assignment of trauma. I break it. I break that. I break that strategy of trauma. I break it. 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 I break it.
something in fire. Command that trauma to burn. Go, go, come on. Turn towards your neighbor. Lay it on their heart. Put it on their head. Command fire to go. Command that fire to burn. Command it to burn. the team and we were doing street ministry and I was I was singing on Jackson Square where all the witches and the warlocks were hallelujah and I was just loving just singing the praises of Jesus that's all I was doing well that night I went back to my Airbnb hallelujah and and uh, and, the, and the voodoo priest astro projected into my room and I woke up sick very very sick and I mean, I, my, I have been battling like sore throats. It's going from ear to ear to ear. I've been to the doctor. I have took medicine. I have pleaded the blood. I have done everything that I could do. And even coming up here, I still had the soreness, could not get rid of it. Hallelujah. And we were up here just singing and my whole throat, even my tongue went completely numb and tingling. Hallelujah. And I don't have that soreness. It's just numb and tingling. All right now, I want you to open your mouth. I want you to start pulling that snake out of your mouth you've been saying words pull it out of your mouth and throw it into the abyss command it to burn and never return start pulling those snakes out your ears and your eyes so you can see again so you can hear again start pull that snake off your body if you have pain on your body your back if you can't reach it have somebody else and shout fire while you're doing it throw that snake into the abyss Tell it to burn and never return. I said burn. 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 I said burn, 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 I said burn. I hear, I hear the Lord saying that the fever of menopause is being reduced because it's been a witchcraft curse to cause you to be in menopause and to give you the hot flash and the fever of the hot flash because remember those witches curse the breast the womb they curse the, all the parts of the body and then Leviathan, those that are skilled at rousing up Leviathan, the witches, they release Leviathan on your body to enforce that curse. Say, I receive, say, I receive my healing from menopausal symptoms right now in the name of Jesus. I want you girls to get together and start pulling this serpent off of the thyroid and the penile gland and your private parts. Come on, pull it off. Throw it to the abyss. Command it to burn and not return. Burn and don't return. Burn and don't return. Burn and don't return. I'll send you to the abyss right now. I'll send you to the fiery abyss. Right now, menopausal symptoms, I rebuke you. Fiery heat, fiery heat, I rebuke you. I 
break the curse. I break the curse that came on the garden when the woman fell to the serpent. I break that curse off your body now. Pull it out of your mouth. Pull it out of your ears. Pull it out of your eyes. Pull it off your thyroid. Pull it off your reproductive parts. And I judge Leviathan in the court. The court is judging you, Leviathan. I have the power for judicial decrees. I will not touch you, but the court will arrest you. The court is arresting Leviathan. We decree the court is arresting Leviathan, slaying that twisting, fleeing serpent in the sea with God's sharp, unrelenting sword. Right now, I hear joint pain. Joint pain is leaving. If you've got pain in your joints, pull that snake off of it now. Go. Throw it into the abyss. Have people take it off your body if you can't reach your back. Command it to burn and never return. Burn. 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 How many of you had your eyes water, your nose water, your ears water sometime during this? Wave at me. Wave at me. Wave at me really big. Keep your waves up. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. People that have water expulsion, you are getting healed of trauma. 29, 30, 31. You're getting healed of trauma. 32, you're getting healed of trauma right now. People who have not had a water expulsion, raise your hand. People, go to the people that have not had a water expulsion and saturate them with fire. Go, go. All consuming fire. All consuming fire. All consuming fire. Baptize me. All consuming fire. All consuming fire. All consuming fire. Baptize me. All consuming fire. All consuming fire. All consuming fire. Baptize me. Oh. 
many of you have less pain in your body? Let's see. Wave your hand at me. If you have less pain in your body, wave at me. Keep your hands up so I can count. Please wave. Wave. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Thank you. Let's give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. Now say, Lord, I believe. That if there is still a snake lodged in my body, in my finances, in my household, on my children, on my spouse, on my belongings, on my ministry, that because I've been baptized with fire, I will see it in a dream tonight. And I will send it to the abyss to burn with fire. Now say, Lord. Now I want you to, I want you, to, you ladies, like act like your pocketbook is, a, you know, slung around your shoulder. Okay. Now reach your hand in your pocketbook and pull out your checkbook and your wallet and hold it in your hand. Okay. Now take your hand and start unwinding that snake. Say, I unwind the python from my gains. Python, you have been judged in this holy court. I have been found innocent of all your charges. So you can no longer squeeze out my gains in my checks, in my salary, in my bonuses, in my advancements in my promotions, in my surprise gifts, in my inheritances, in my retirement funds, in my mortgages. Python, you cannot prevent me or squeeze out my ability to completely pay off my car, my mortgage, my bills, my schooling, my children's schooling, anything that I need to advance to the level of living debt free, Python, you cannot prevent me from gaining in that area. I take you off my checkbook, my savings account, my credit cards, my wallet, my savings account and every account and I show you who's boss you've been judged in the holy court I don't have anything in common with you anymore and the record has been wiped out and now I command you to burn and never return now when I count to three throw it into the pit and scream burn and don't return are you ready are you ready are you ready are you ready? Are you ready? Ready? One, two, three, drive! Burn! Burn! Burn, 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 to God. Come on, shout. Okay, 
I'm expecting big testimonies tomorrow, amen? Yeah? Can you just give God a, a, a hand as we leave tonight? Thank you, Lord.